What is up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter, and we are headed out to the studio with our Kurt Hammerly mug. Oh, we are headed out to the studio to unload a completely finished glaze kiln. And I am excited. What's in this glaze kiln? Probably Minnesota mugs. Probably other things. It's hard to hold a camera in one hand and a coffee cup in the other hand and then open doors. But we are doing it. We are doing it. It has been super rainy in Minnesota. Super rainy, which means lots of pottery getting done and a minimal amount of lake time. So what do we have in this? We have a big bowl on top, I know that. We have a bunch of mugs. What's your favorite mug to drink out of and why? Comment below, tell me why. I always wonder like, why do I choose and why do people choose the mugs that they do? Like this one from Kurt Hammerly. I don't always choose this one. It's not, it's not always my fave. It's, it's kind of heavy. I mean, I love his stuff. No, don't get me wrong. I love his work, but this mug in particular. Okay, here it is. Whew. Here's the kiln. Ready? Ready to open it? There it is. Full kiln. There's that all sandstone bowl. Here's some Aurora green. Nice. All right, I'm gonna set you down. I'm gonna set you down and we're gonna do this thing. Let's do it. First pots on top, Aurora Green over Green Opal. I left the I left the Minnesota glazed with those trees. What do you think of that? Pretty cool, pretty cool. That's a beautiful glaze. Beautiful. Same, these things are the same. Just a little tumbler, carved tumbler, and then a little planter, a little succulent planter. And then here is that copper ore over sandstone, which Whew, that dripped pretty bad, so that's gonna be a little. I kinda like having diamond-shaped cookies because then you have a little leverage. Pull it off, although that seems, I don't know how I'm gonna get that off. Well, I guess that's future John's problem. Whew, here's another one. This one should come off, there we go. So there's that, looks like almost like chocolatey. Like it? Oh, I like it. Very different for my style. All right, and then here is just that one big sandstone bowl. Look at that thing, that is just wild. That is getting a little warped, warpage, warpage. Holy cow, that is super warped. I don't like that, don't like it. I thought it was gonna be, stuff was gonna be so not warped because it's drying so slowly in here, but I guess I'm wrong. Sometimes pottery can be so frustrating, so frustrating that that big bowl warped. How do you solve warping issues? There's a nice bowl that is not as warped. It's got a giant bubble in it. See that? There's like a big bubble. That's kind of been happening a little bit with this dark iron stoneware. I don't know what the deal is. I was a little upset about this bowl, so I smashed it. <laughs> Just kidding. But I did actually break it to look inside at the bubble. And so that's what it looked like on the inside. And after a little bit further research, I think that the clay, that dark iron stoneware, is getting over fired. So I think that the clay is actually only meant for cone four to six. And so when you get over vitrified, that's when you get those bubbles. And that's why I've only been getting it in that clay. So I think I might do just like a straight fire of all dark iron stoneware, since I have a decent amount of it right now, to like cone five instead of cone six. And hopefully that fixes all the, but like some of the stuff comes out and it's fine. So I'm guessing that there's parts of my kiln that are getting a little over fired. And then there's parts that are right at cone six. And so like, you know, a lot of these mugs were, were dark iron stoneware and others, um, and they didn't bubble. So like this one came out perfectly and it's on dark iron stoneware and it didn't bubble at all. That's my game plan. I feel a little bit better after researching and I at least know what I think it is anyway. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was a little overfired. But now I just have more pieces to make mosaic concrete pavers with, right? So both big bowls that came out are not that good. Ooh, that's cool. So this is the sapphire on the bottom and winter wood on top. That's very cool, I like it. I like it a lot. There's that Norse blue with sandstone. That's really a nice. That's nice, I like that a lot. And then here, ooh, this is cool. Oh, that, I love that. I, that is gorgeous. Can you see that? That sapphire under winter wood and that where that breaks, that's gorgeous. 
Oh, I, I'm so excited about that. Oh, so cool. So cool. Now I'm getting excited. Now I'm getting excited. Sapphire under winter wood. There was one where I left the trees and you can just barely, bar barely see the tree. What do you think? What's your opinion? Do you like the Minnesota unglazed? Do you like the Minnesota glazed? Here's the same two. This is the Norse blue. So this I left glazed and here it's unglazed. And then here's just straight up winter wood. One glazed, one not glazed. Alrighty. Woo! Those are cool. So that's the dark iron stoneware um, with my old Northern Lights glaze, which turned out really nice. Like, what the heck? It's really getting bubbly. See the bubble on that? Is that, am I firing it too quickly? That's a good glaze. I like it. Oh man. Yeah, it's like it's little, little tiny bubbles in there, but that's winter wood over the dark iron stoneware. There's another winter wood. That's pretty cool. Interesting anyway. A little different. And then there's straight up, this is just straight up John the Potter right there. Northern Lights. Still one of my favorite glazes. All these new fancy glazes and I'm, I still love that one. That's good stuff. Whew, getting hot in here. Getting hot in here. So here's some custom ones um, for the Kickstarter that are coming out. Georgia, Mexico. Is that Arizona? That's very cool. Very cool. There's another Minnesota on the dark, dark iron stoneware, which that turned out pretty nice. Straight up mug. Nice, like it. And what else we got in here? There's a Texas in the Northern Lights. There's England in the Northern Lights. Nice, so I took these out of the kiln before and I wasn't super happy with the blue, so I redid the blue, which look at that drip coming right over the United States, that's cool. So that blue is better. I like it better. It's still not like perfect. Still a little bit better. A little bit more blue. Yeah, nice. Very cool. I mean, it's better than nothing, huh? And then, I mean, this is what, I can already see that this is the, this is the real good blue. Look at that. Red, white, and blue right there. A couple just straight sandstone on dark iron stoneware. Nice, really nice. Oh, more red, white, and blue. Kinda neat. That's a descriptive word I don't use very often. That's kinda neat. Another red, white, and blue. Got a couple red, white, and blue shot glasses. I, this is the blue surf. I really wish that I would have done the blue surf on those other cups, but that's okay. So the, I also did two different kinds of whites. So. This is just a matte white cone six glaze, and this is just a white underglaze, which I definitely like the white underglaze better. And then we just got some straight up Northern Lights mugs. Northern Light mugs. Oh, there's just the black and green. And then the last one is sandstone, and that dark iron stoneware. Boom! All right, friends. That was it for this kiln. I have to say I'm not super, I mean some great stuff came out and I'm very happy with it. And it's certainly, a lot of the stuff in here will sell and that's great. But we also got a lot of weird things. Bubbles coming out of the dark iron stoneware. The bowls both didn't really work. So can't say I'm super pumped on this kiln. Um, I mean this red, white, and blue is freaking cool but so I guess my expectations are just really high these days <laughs> is what it comes down to all right well thanks for tuning into this short little kill unloading appreciate you and your subscribing and everything so subscribe like comment share all the things see you in the next video
Paris. <laughs>